If you are prepared to be incredibly frustrated, then this video is for you. Today we are working on a F-150 EcoBoost, and what we have going on is the emergency brake is no longer engaging. And what's happened is that this mechanism right here, which is what sets the parking brake, has seized and rusted, and it's no longer unapplying the brake. So the brakes are always applied. The problem is you're not working with a lot of room and you have to get your fingers in tight places and get a whole bunch of stuff together. So we're gonna show you the best way that we found to do it and if anyone has any better tricks, please share. So the first thing you'll do is you'll take a screwdriver and you'll put it between the pad and the caliper and you'll just go ahead and compress the caliper just a little bit so that it's easy for you to remove the brakes and then put them all back together. And then you'll take your 13 millimeter to remove the caliper mounting bolts. So we've got one off, and we've got the second one off. Then you'll just lift your caliper off and you'll rest it on the leaf spring so that it doesn't fall. Then you'll take your brakes and set those aside so you don't get them dirty. At this point, you'll then take an 18 millimeter socket to remove the caliper mounting bracket. Then your next one, Take that out and put that to the side. Now you can remove your bracket, move the bracket to the side. Now, <clears throat> if your parking brake is seized and applied on, you'll see this cable right here, which is your parking brake cable, and then you'll put your head in, you'll see that there is a white clip, and then there is a spring. If that spring is bound up, that means that your parking brake is engaged. So if the parking brake cable is pulled further this way, towards the front of the car, as opposed to the rear of the car, it's engaged. And you can check that pretty easily if it's frozen by just taking a long flat needle or long flat screwdriver, putting it at the end, and then smacking it with your hand or smacking it with a hammer. Because you want this to be as long as possible so that the uh, so that the emergency brake is disengaged. So now we're gonna go ahead and hammer around in a circle to remove the rotor. So I'm using a rubber mallet. If you use a metal one, you're probably gonna dent this pretty bad. And you don't wanna damage this surface here. If you're gonna use a rubber, or if you're gonna use a metal hammer, you can use it right here and just hit it around to knock loose the, uh, the rotor and the inner emergency brake drum and shoes. And just do that and work your way around. Now, if you have new rotors to put on this, go ahead and use a metal hammer and whack this thing because it'll come right off. But only do that if you're replacing the rotors. So now we are loosening the brakes on the parking brake. Try to alleviate some of the stress keeping on the rotor. So now what we're going to go do is we are going to get uh, we're going to get our little needle nose here, and we're going to compress this plastic clip in the back and force it through. So that's one side, and then we're going to get the other side to press through. It's going to take some force. You can get it out of its keeper, and then you should be able to slip it over top of this mechanism, but if you can't, I'm going to show you the way we did it. So the easiest trick to getting this to uh, come off is to use a zip tie, and you want to get the zip tie through majority of it, and then with a needle nose plier, you'll grab your zip tie and pull it through, pull that through. And then you'll zip tie it so that it holds this return spring. So we're just going to keep on zip tying it. And as you can see, the spring is now compressed. And I can much easily, much more easily, remove this component. So now we're going to go ahead, 
move this out of the way and we're going to go ahead and check this mechanism and make sure that it is actuating to its fullest ability and uh, we may put some grease on it. It doesn't look nearly as rusted as the driver's side. Alright, and then once you have that removed, you can then unhook it from the other side. If it will let you. And then we can remove the preloader. And what this says, this is your adjustment for your parking brake. So to remove these clips, we're just going to go ahead and tap them out with a hammer. And then once they're released, we'll pry up from the bottom and remove the shoes. And then we'll go ahead and use our flat head screwdriver to remove it from this carrier. And then we can move this out of the way. So we're gonna separate these and look like that later. So this is your ABS ring for your rear wheel and this is your sensor for your rear wheel. So you'll want to clean that up while you're back here. So we'll just go ahead and knock off some of the debris and then we'll clean it up with brake parts cleaner. Then what you do is you'll fish this guy out. There's a little grommet in the back that holds it in and then you'll want to go ahead and position it so that you can remove it. And you're going to have to break it loose a little bit so that you can, but eventually it will come out. All right. So as you can see, the new part moves freely. And the old part, I can't even really move with my hands. Now, there's one of two things you can do. You can get the new part, or you can knock this guy loose and put some anti-seize on it. We're just going to go ahead and use our new part since we already have it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some anti-seize in there and then we put it all back together. Now this guy goes in like so. And then once that's all the way through we'll go ahead and start reassembling. Now here's the sad part. Everything has been really easy up until this moment, and now everything's going to be really difficult. If you have an extra pair of hands with you, that's great. If not, you can do it yourself, but just be patient. Take breaks when you need to. All right. So from trial and, er trial and error, this is how we figured out the best way for us to do this. And if you have any better ideas, please let us know. We are open to all assistance. So the first thing we did is we made sure that this spring clip right here was on because we couldn't figure out how we could put it on if this was already installed. Hopefully there's an aftermarket solution that we don't know about. So we'll go ahead and put, we'll latch this guy in place. And with that latch in place, we'll sort of shuffle it into its keeper over here. Then, We'll muscle the spring up and flex it over, and we'll get it over to here. And as we continue, we'll just use some light tapping of the hammer to help us locate everything. So now that we have that installed, that's still one of the easiest things to do. The next thing we found is we would go ahead and reinstall our adjuster. Now when you install the adjuster on this side, you want it to be facing towards the front of the vehicle. So just take a note of which way everything's facing when you're installing this so that you can put it back together. And if you're kind of concerned that it's going to be a while, just take a picture. So this is where it's really nice to have an extra pair of hands. But before you do that, you want to go ahead and just move this shoe out of the way and just put a little bit anti-seize or some grease or something so that you can slide the clip back on because you're going to be putting force on it from two separate directions. Now this side is harder because you have to fit your finger into a small hole which keeps that retainer in and we're going to do our best to show you how we're going to do this on camera. What I do right now is I put a small screwdriver in the hole to prop up the little retainer. And once we have the retainer propped up, we have to fish it into 
small hole in the shoe. If you have someone with you, have them hold a screwdriver to press this up. If you're doing this by yourself, and what I mean by up is pressing this little, that little metal piece all the way out, because that gives you the most clearance to do this. And it is a pain by yourself. The next thing is, you'll need to grab your little retainer clip, which mine is nowhere to be found right now. Probably fell out in between that time. It did. So we'll go ahead and fish it back in. And how I fish it back in is I pull the shoe towards me so I can manipulate the little dowel. And then you push the shoe over it. Now the shoe's always gonna be wanting to pull forward and you always have to press back on it. So the next thing, and this is where it gets kind of difficult, is you're gonna to wanna to try and hold the shoe in its position, okay? And push this guy all the way through so that you have as much to grab on it, okay? What we can go ahead and do is take our slide clip. So we'll take our slide clip and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it on. And then while we're putting it on, we're gonna use these guys to press it down on there. So we're gonna just put that in place like so, okay? Lots of finesse here. Put that on place, go behind, push it through again, okay? And then we're going to then, here's where it gets fun, press down and flip it on. And that's how you're gonna do that. And then you can just take a light hammer and tap it. So, that looked really awesome and easy. It's a total pain in the butt to do. It's gonna take you a lot of attempts to get that on. If you have someone here to help you to hold this stuff in place, that's perfect. If not, you wanna grab one of these. Then you're gonna to wanna to use at least one screwdriver. And if you have two screwdrivers, you can accomplish the same job. So now that we have all that back together, we're gonna to go ahead and put our adjuster back together. Um, on this side, you can move this entire assembly this way, all the way out, which will give you enough place to do it with your hands. And then what I did is I just used these needle nose pliers, pressed it in, and then pushed it up. And you can do it pretty much the same way. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just put this guy on. So we'll crank it all the way down. And then to see here. So you crank it down and you're going to spin it down or up. Just showing which way it gets spun to have it go up or down. So easiest way to do it, spin it all the way closed and then install it and just expand it just a hair because it will fall out as you can see. All right, then you can grab your spring here, and your spring will go on one side, and then you'll grab your screwdriver, and put that in there. Just go ahead and get, get inside one of these. And try to just push it along. Grab it and hook it. So you can see that it's on, and all I did to get it on, I went in with it, and I just pushed it in. And then you can also go like this, get in there. Maybe. And then that will let you pull it in. So now I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. And then just give it a quick test spin. Everything feels good there. So we're just going to show you how we were able to compress this spring so that we could put everything back together easily. Go ahead and do this. Just tighten it up. 
on opposing sides. I'll pull it in a little bit, okay? All right. Tell me when to stop. Okay. All right, and keep pulling. All right. Yep. Pull it hard. Is that more than last time? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so you can just use two zip ties to hold this spring back a little bit, and then you can go ahead and reattach the backing of this. So you'll just compress the spring a little bit more. Once the parking brake cable is reinstalled, reassembly should be pretty straightforward. Simply reinstall brake components in the opposite order as they came off. Thanks for watching. We hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a thumbs up, and if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe so you always get the latest repair videos, and as always, Happy motoring.